it's Julie. Welcome back to Rowan Co. Farms. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. We bring you two new videos every single week about homesteading, homemaking, flower farming, DIY, food preservation, and everything in between. So if you enjoy videos like that, please follow along with our channel, like and subscribe down below. But let's get to today's content. So we are going to be doing a collaboration for the month of February with Anna at the Fermented Homestead. Uh, she's doing a fermentation February, and so every for every single day of the month of February, a YouTuber will be bringing you a fermentation recipe. So there will be a playlist linked down below for you guys to go check it out, but follow along and see all of the different homesteads that are gonna be bringing you some great YouTube fermentation videos. Uh, we've got beginner stuff, we've got intermediate, and we've got advanced ferments coming your way. So if you've ever been interested in learning how to ferment, this is the time and these are the people you wanna learn from. So let me just give you a quick sneak peek of who is on the list of this collaboration. You are gonna love these homesteaders. You're probably already following most of them, but if you're not, go ahead and check them out. We've got the Fermented Homestead, of course. She's the one that has started this big fermentation collaboration project, and she is the queen of ferments. Uh, we have Bumblebee Apothecary, uh, Freedom Homestead, Morris Patch of Heaven. We have Hidden Oaks Homestead, Acre Homestead, Sage and Stone Homestead, The Bacon Grease Goddess, A Good Life Farm, uh, The Green Witch Homestead, Becoming a Farm Girl, The North Star Prepsteader, Hood to Homestead, Stiver's Homestead, That 1870s Homestead, A Farm Girl in the Making, and Mulberry Branch Farm. Guys, what a lineup that is right there. That is the best list of homestead people that you could ask to learn from. So make sure you check out this list down below. Make sure you comment on all the videos because that gets you entered into a drawing that Anna is putting on at the end of February, the very last day of the month. She's going to be doing a drawing from those people that comment on videos for a fermentation kit. So that's a great win. So if you guys are gonna be following along anyway, just make sure to drop a comment down below. So anyway, I'm gonna be making for this video today, we're gonna to be doing kombucha. Uh, kombucha is a fermented tea. Uh, you can add flavor to it as well, but a fermented tea drink uh, that is a probiotic um, powerhouse. It's a delicious drink. It's kind of the first soda pop. <laughs> the, it's carbonated, so you get that nice fizzy texture. Um, you can add all kinds of different flavors to it, um, so you can really customize it to what you like. Uh, so it's really basic and easy to make. It takes a few days, just like all ferments do, uh, because you have to let the fermentation process happen. So what you will need if you're going to be doing a kombucha is a few different things. I have an actual kombucha SCOBY. Uh, a SCOBY is what forms in kombucha. It's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Basically, this is all the good stuff that causes the fermentation to happen. There's yeast colonies, bacteria colonies, and they form, I'll show it to you in just a minute, but in here is a big little, it's a clump of this bacteria and yeast. And we're going to be adding that into our tea that we brewed today to jumpstart this ferment, okay? So scobies are necessary for kombucha. Now you can grow your own scoby or you can buy a scoby that's already ready to go, which is what I have done here. So I actually had a friend of mine on Instagram offer to send me a SCOBY in the mail, uh, which she did. She sealed it up in a bunch of Ziploc bags and, and shipped it off. And it came to me the other day and I'll pop a picture up um, right here. It was so funny when I got the bag, the bag was completely puffed up with the gases that happen from fermentation. So the thing was ready to pop. <laughs> so I'm glad I got it when I did. Um, so yeah, so the SCOBY um, is what is gonna get our ferment started and rolling. Um, now, scobies are different for every single ferment, and as you continue to ferment, your scoby will stay in your fermentation container vessel, 
and it'll continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger over time and it'll just add a new layer every single ferment that you do so there'll be more bacteria more yeast more culture that gets added to the scoby that we put in here now if you ever wanted to you can see there are layers in it as well you can peel a layer off that's where you can donate one or give one to someone and they can start their own uh, ferment of kombucha so so I'm going to show you the SCOBY in just a minute here. You want to make sure your hands are really, really clean before you touch it. So we're going to use the SCOBY as our jump start. We're going to be using just some organic tea bags. I'm using just black tea, but people also use green tea, but I prefer black tea for mine. Um, so I have six tea bags here and I brewed uh, just a little bit of hot water um, and I'm going to be brewing my six tea bags into a nice, clean, glass vessel. Uh, once I do that, I'm going to be adding a half a cup of sugar. I use raw cane sugar, but you can use white sugar as well. Just remember that most of the sugars are going to be feeding this fermentation process. So by the time the ferment is done, there is very, very little sugar left um, in the liquid. So it's not going to be a sweet liquid. This is the food for the ferment. Sugar is always the food for your ferment. So they're going to be eating this and creating our wonderful kombucha tea. So let's get started with our tea process, the, the brewing process. Uh, we're going to be uh, taking all of our tea bags. I have six here. We're going to be doing a half a gallon. So this is plenty for a half a gallon. If you wanted to do a gallon, you could just double the recipe. But I don't, I don't need that much. Uh, half a gallon for me is plenty. Most of the people in my family do not really care for kombucha, so they're not going to drink it. It's just going to be me, and I think that's plenty for one person <laughs> to drink. Um, if you're new to ferments and consuming fermented foods, uh, you want to start slowly because um, you're adding a lot of really, really rich um, probiotics to your gut, and that can sometimes be overwhelming and cause some stomach upset if you're not used to it. So start slow, a few sips at a time each day, or maybe with a meal, and and start with that. Or it's same with foods, just a few bites at a time until you get used to it, and then it just becomes a normal routine in your diet. So what I've done is I brewed some hot water here this is my electric tea kettle. So I just brew a concentrate. That way it's not too hot. So I'm just gonna add my hot water here. And that's plenty, like maybe a quart or so, not quite a quart. Cause then later we can add more cold water to cool this off. So what I'm gonna do now is add my half a cup of sugar to this and let it dissolve. So let's make sure that our sugar gets nice and dissolved here. Uh-oh, some of our, oops, <laughs> they fell down in there. Let's pull those out so we don't have dissolved paper in here. Oh, did I get them all? No, there's another one, another stray. Okay, all right, I'm gonna stir stir in my sugar, make sure it's really dissolved here. I usually let this brew for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. Okay, I'm gonna set this to the side. You also wanna make sure when you're handling any type of SCOBY or anything to do with fermentation that your vessels are very clean, your hands are clean, any utensils that you use are clean uh, because otherwise you could contaminate your ferment and then you could have mold and introduce all kinds of nasty things into your fermentation. Um, a fermentation should always smell a little bit sour, but it shouldn't smell rotten. So if at any point during your ferment you smell something that is rotten, something has gone wrong. You also should not see mold. Um, so mold, like white mold, black mold, green mold, nothing like that should be forming. Um, 
the SCOBY itself, and I'm gonna show you that in just, just a second, is it looks kind of gross. It's like slimy looking, but that is totally normal. It is healthy to look that way. And so when you see it, don't be grossed out by that. That is normal. What we're looking for that is wrong is like I said, bad, bad smells, um, rotten smells, mold, um, anything like that that just doesn't look normal. Um, so let me wash my hands and I'm gonna take the SCOBY out and let you guys take a look at it. And now I wanna show you the SCOBY. So let me get a paper towel. So the SCOBY, like I said earlier, looks really gross and slimy. So this is a good, uh, some of it's hanging off here. So you can see this round form here. This was in probably the same size jar as what I have here, a half gallon size, because it does take on the size of the jar that it's in. So it looks gross. And so now all this stuff that's hanging down here, these are just strings of yeast, bacteria, and culture. And this is a totally normal, healthy SCOBY. So we're gonna be adding this in to our liquid. And so as this forms new layers, you can peel these slimy pieces apart and you can add, uh, sorry, you can, you know, either throw them away, feed them to your chickens, or pass them along and let someone else start a SCOBY. So that is the SCOBY. And it's just being stored currently in just a little bit of kombucha so that it stays in an acidic environment. So it's been about 10 minutes. Our tea is brewed. We're gonna remove the tea bags. Our sugar is dissolved in here. Now, right now, this is very, very hot from, from boiling it in our kettle. We do not want to introduce hot, hot liquid into our SCOBY. The SCOBY is a living thing. Um, those bacteria are alive, and if we kill them with this heat, then the SCOBY is dead and it will not serve any purpose for our ferment. So we wanna make sure that our liquid is cooled down, and what we're gonna do to cool it down is we're going to add additional uh, liquid to it. Um, since we're doing a half gallon, we're gonna make sure that this tops up at a half gallon of, of liquid and then we will add our SCOBY inside here. So I'm gonna pour this in. We'll top it off with some more water and then we'll add our SCOBY into it. I'm gonna leave a little room at the top here just for gases and bubbling and for the SCOBY to sit on top. You do wanna make sure that you're using either distilled water, either well water, um, or non-chlorinated water. The chlorine in most city water is going to destroy the bacteria that we're trying to develop. Okay, so now that we've got our tea in here, let's go ahead and get our SCOBY. And again, make sure your hands are really, really clean Let's take that whole thing and place it into our tea. Usually it'll float right on top. If it doesn't, that's okay. I'm actually gonna add this liquid from my jar as well, and that'll help get this process jump-started even more. So what I do with my kombuchas is that I do a continuous brewing process, which means that when this gets down to having about a cup of kombucha left in it, I will go ahead and start the process of making my next batch using my SCOBY and the little bit of liquid that was in the, uh, uh, left in the container to start my next ferment. So we should be good to go. I'm gonna let this go for a few days and then I'm gonna bring you guys back and I'll show you what it looks like.
Um, while it sits for its ferment, I'm gonna be using one of these uh, mason top lids. It's a little airlock lid. It's got a little hole in the top. It's gonna allow gases to escape while keeping things from getting inside. Uh, so we're just gonna add that to the top of our jar here and we'll let that sit. Uh, usually uh, kombucha ferments only take a couple of days, um, so we should be able to come back and have a few drinks of this. Um, it won't taste very good for the first, first ferment. We're also gonna do a second ferment where we add our flavor, and that's where we can really, really customize the kombucha to what we like. So you can add juice, uh, you can add fresh fruit, you can add all kinds of stuff to make the kombucha a little bit sweeter and have a fruity flavor to it as well. So when we come back, we'll be doing that. So it'll be a few days for me, but it'll be just a couple of clicks away for you. So we'll be right back. So if you ever wanna take a break from your kombucha and you don't want to keep brewing, um, you can just take your um, kombucha liquid, about a cup or so, and your SCOBY, put that in a fresh clean jar and just place it into your refrigerator and, and just leave it in there until you're ready to start again. Um, now you can do that for several months um, and store your, your SCOBY um, in kind of a state of coolness. <laughs> when things are cold, uh, fermentation slows down greatly. And so um, you're able to kind of use the refrigerator to keep, to kind of halt that fermentation a little bit. Um, so yeah, that gives you a little bit of a break and then you can always come back and start again. And then you would do what we just did here today. You would brew some fresh tea, add the sugar and a little bit of cold water, put your SCOBY and, the, and then your fermentation liquid and add that in and you're going to get that process started again. So Hopefully that helped you guys out. I hope that was interesting to you and we'll be back in just a moment and we'll show you the progress after just a few days. So let's do a little follow up on our kombucha that we started. So it's been four days. Today's the 18th and you can start to see today's the first day that I've started to see these little bubbles in here. It has been very quiet up until today. And now you're starting to see that little bit of fermentation starting to happen. See those bubbles in there? Sorry, there's a little bit of a glare, but you can see them right up in there. I'm trying to look in here and see if I see anything else, but it's hard to see in there. The main thing is you start to see them collect in there at the top. So yeah, we should definitely by tomorrow see a lot more of that. So just we'll follow up to, again tomorrow. I will take the lid off just to show you, hold on, what it looks like. Let me set you down, Frank. So it's kind of puffed up a little bit. You see from the side, there's, that's because there's air kind of getting trapped under there from those bubbles. I'm just gonna push this down just a little bit with my little wooden spoon here. Oh, goodness, okay. And not, really for any purpose but just to keep it from getting too dried out sometimes they can get kind of dried out if they float to the top like that there we go maybe that will help some maybe not maybe not <laughs> i just need to leave it alone but yeah so we're starting to see that fermentation happening so that's good so we'll follow up tomorrow and see how we are. All right, guys, we're back. So it's been just a little over a week since we started our kombucha with our SCOBY inside. We definitely have some fermentation action going on in here. I see lots of bubbles happening. Um, so in just a second, I'm gonna bring you in a little closer so we can take a look at those bubbles and that action going on. And when we're done with that, we're going to take our bottles here and we're going to start the second ferment where we can add our flavors and make the kombucha a little bit sweeter. So currently this is really sour because the sugar that we added initially uh, last week, if you'll remember, the sugar has been eaten up by the whole fermentation process and that leaves this liquid feeling, uh, excuse me, uh, tasting very sour. So we're going to add more sugar or a, a sweetener of some kind into the ferment to make it taste a little bit sweeter. Uh, we're also gonna bottle it up and put a lid on it and that's gonna let um, those gases from fermentation stay inside the bottle, which will give us our nice 
bubbly carbonation uh, when we go to drink it later. So let me bring you in a little closer and I'll show you the fermentation and how the SCOBY looks now. So if you look here, you can see all these bubbles that are forming here. And that is letting you know that there is fermentation happening in there. Now, if you remember, our SCOBY originally was that really dark color, but you can see this light color forming on the top. And that is the next layer of SCOBY that's forming. This is not mold. You can see it's kind of, it looks kind of gelatinous there. Um, but that is all normal SCOBY growth. So that's what we're looking for. I'm gonna wash my hands before I touch it. So I just wanted to show you guys what the fermentation looks like in the kombucha. So for the second fermentation, what we're gonna be doing is adding in whatever flavor that we like. So lots of people add fruit or fruit juice uh, to their ferments along with a little bit of sugar um, in order to get that ferment uh, jump started again and feed it, okay? So when we're feeding it with that sugar, um, it's going to start bubbling again. And we're gonna capture those bubbles by putting the lid on, on our jar here. And that way when we do open it in a few more days, it's gonna be really bubbly and we can drink it like we would a soda. So what I'm gonna be using to um, add sweetness and flavor to my kombucha is some peach jam that I have. Now, lots of jams contain pectin and this jam does not. When I make my jams, it's just sugar and fruit. So if you have only sugar and fruit, then you could use this method. But if you don't, you're welcome to use fresh fruit or fresh fruit juice in order to sweeten your kombucha. So I'm just gonna be adding um, a small couple of tablespoons of fruit along with a few knobs of fresh ginger. So it's gonna be a nice ginger peach flavor and I think that's gonna taste really amazing. So you can use all kinds of flavor combinations. Um, check out on the internet, look on Pinterest, um, all the places that you like to look, but you can find all kinds of different flavor combinations for your kombucha. This is just what I'm gonna use because it's what I have at home right now and it's the flavors that I like. So let's get started. We're gonna add first our little bit of flavoring into our jars and then we'll top it off with the kombucha that's in our big mason jar here. So. Here we go. It's probably gonna be a little messy. I could not find my funnel. So I'm gonna be trying to work this thick jam into these jars with a kind of small holes. So I'm gonna put you guys on fast forward so you don't have to see this messy part, but um, we're gonna add about, I'm gonna say about two tablespoons into each one of these jars. So I'm gonna pour my kombucha into this spouted container so that way I can pour it in here a little bit easier. And I think what I need to do is take my SCOBY out first and put it on a nice clean plate. Now, if you'll remember from the other day, we wanna make sure that we save at least a cup of this in the bottom so that we can do another brew. Or if we don't wanna do a brew, we'll have something to store our SCOBY in and put it in the refrigerator. So, that should be enough there. Now we can transfer this into our jars. I'm gonna leave a little space at the top of each jar to allow room for the uh, carbonation to happen. So 
So let's put our SCOBY back into the jar. And now is when we would brew another batch of tea and add sugar to it and go ahead and start another batch of kombucha. But right now we're gonna go ahead and put our lids on, on our containers here. And actually I need to clean these off a little bit. to make sure these are nice and clean so there's not a bunch of sugary stuff stuck to them. Okay, now let's add our tops. And then I'm gonna give each one of these just a gentle shake, just to kind of let that jam get mixed in a little bit. Then we're gonna put a little label on these guys and we're gonna let them sit for an additional two or three days and then we'll put them in the refrigerator and then we'll give them a taste. So, all right guys, that's our kombucha. Let's give them a label. So make sure you always label your kombucha with the date that you put it in the bottle and also write down how many days that you intend to leave it in the bottle. That way you can remember to check it. And this is peach and ginger. And we're gonna give this at least three days to sit at room temperature and then we'll give it a little taste and see how it is. And then if we need to leave it a little longer, we can, or if we're satisfied at that point, we can put it in the refrigerator and it'll kind of leave it in a dormant state at that point. All right. So I think this is gonna be enough kombucha for me for a little while. So I'm gonna put my SCOBY into the refrigerator and I'll get it back out again in another couple of weeks when I get ready to make some more. Um, so this is a great method if you wanna do that, but if you know that you wanna have it all the time, you can just immediately go ahead and brew yourself another batch, put it in here and let it start its process again. Um, but I know that it takes me a little while to drink um, these kombuchas. I, I usually drink maybe a third of a bottle each day. So these will last me for a couple of weeks. I can't see what I wrote. There we go. And last one. And these bottles, um, these are just reused bottles that I, from kombucha that I've already bought. Um, you can do that. It's good to keep it in a, in a dark jar though. It helps um, protect the ferment. Um, but you can also order um, online. I'll put a link down below of some different jars that would work for a ferment like this. But I'm always a fan of being able to reuse something that I already have and that's available to me and that I've already paid for once. So, uh, so there we go, guys. We're going to come back in two or three more days and we're going to check this for the last time and I'm going to show you our final product. Hey guys, so we're back. It's been three days since we put our second ferment into action. I've gone ahead after those three days, I've popped this into the fridge. So now it's gotten really cold and I wanna pour it out and see what our nice bubbly kombucha looks like. Let's see if we have achieved success. Look at that. Nice and foamy and bubbly. Awesome. Let me show you guys a little bit closer. It's definitely nice and bubbly. All right, let's taste it. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh, I love that. That is really good. The peach comes through really well. The ginger 
I can really taste the ginger too, but it's nice. I love that little bit of heat that the ginger gives. And I was a little worried that the peaches would be that would be weird in the ferment, but but it's not. It really gives a nice flavor. Um, and even leaving the little chunks of peach in there, I think tastes really good. So I really like this, guys. If you have your own jam at home that is just sugar and, and fruit, you can definitely use it to, um, to flavor your kombucha if you ever want to try that at home. Um, I would not do it if you have pectin inside because it will cause your um, kombucha to gel up a little bit and you really don't want that. That will be kind of a, a weird consistency, but otherwise, oh, so good. Um, but you can also, again, just, just sweeten with some fruit juice or just some fresh fruit as well. So, cheers guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you got a little inspiration for maybe making your own kombucha at home. Um, it's really a fun project. It just takes a little time and I hope you guys will try it yourself. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on kombucha making and I can't wait to see you next time here at Rowan Co. Farms.